things don't doesn't really dramatically change. You still need to find a problem, okay? And once yeah. you find a problem, you need to search for people that have the same problem and wants to solve the same problem. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Leomitech, sponsored by Homeward Ventures, Hippo Insurance, Opus Labs, Synergy Global, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, Birthright Excel, Serona Partners, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Let's talk about research and innovation. Meet Rani Lani, Head of Emerging Technologies at Innovation, ETNI, at Cisco Israel. Ron is also co-founder of Portshift.io, acquired by Cisco, a pioneer in the cloud-native security market. Prior to Portshift, Ron held executive leadership position with Checkpoint Software Technologies, leading network security appliances business line. Earlier, Ron co-founded Blade Fusion, the first industry standard for multi-bladed security appliance for enterprise, and prior to that, he managed an engineering team of exceptional researchers and developers in distributed computing at Main Control, acquired by IBM. Ron is the inventor and author of more than 10 patents, most of which are in the field of cybersecurity. He holds a BSc and an MSc in computer science with honors from the Technion in Haifa. Ron Ilani, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you? I'm great. Uh, thank you for, for having me and great uh, to have this uh, little chat or fireside chat, so to speak. It's going to be it's going to be fantastic. Ron, you're a serial entrepreneur. Uh, you're an inventor. Uh, you're a technologist. You're a researcher. Uh, you know, your curiosity, you know, is a uh, so is, you know, runs through your journey and I'm, and I'm looking forward to picking your brain on some of the some of these experiences that you've had and the insights that you've gained, um, both on the entrepreneurial side, on the invention side and the curiosity side. But even before we do that, I want to go back in time to growing up in Africa uh, and tell me just a little bit about about your very non-traditional upbringing as a kid. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, well, I, you can say that literally I was, uh, well, I was growing with the monkeys uh, <laughs> during the 70s, uh, late, late 70s. I'm joking, of course. So uh, actually, my childhood was uh, in West Africa, in Nigeria. I spent uh, several years with my parents. There were, there was actually some, I would say, uh, from uh, the Ministry of Defense, uh, you know, uh, being some uh, part of there. Uh, so I spent there, uh, you know, most of my childhood, uh, you know, until the, I think, the uh, fifth grade. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was an interesting experience. I can say that, you know, uh, uh, it was very interesting in the sense that, uh, you know, uh, actually what you have as a kid, okay, uh, in Israel and what you had as a kid in Africa back then was very different. Uh, you know, both time, you know, growing up, uh, learning, studying, by the way, I, I, I've studied the first grade. It, we in a class with a, another single student, so we were two in the first grade. <laughs> yeah, wow. so it was so it, it was pretty interesting, pretty unique. Uh, and yes, and when I arrived, uh, you know, in Israel, uh, I've actually arrived with a language, and actually with two languages, with both English but also the native Igbo language. So yes, this is uh, also <laughs> another interesting story that uh, <laughs> I can tell. Obviously, I don't know how to speak today, but it was very cool to speak when I was a kid. At least with the native, yeah. So quite an interesting uh, experience, I can say. And uh, I think, you know, growing up in an untraditional classical environment, um, to some extent, contribute uh, to the way that uh, uh, you know you can cope with different situation in a different way. Okay, it's not it's not a classical growing up experience. If you you know if you travel mm-hmm. between countries, specifically Africa, specifically in the late uh, 70s back then. So yeah, that's the story. If you had to go throughout your journey and to f- pinpoint the time that, that, that sparked your curiosity as an inventor and as a scientist, um, is, is there a moment like that? Were you always from childhood that curious or, or was there something that changed 
the way that you saw your own curiosity that led you down this path? I think, well, the number one sort of uh, pillar, okay, that uh, at least for, my, for me personally was that every time that you are um, sort of uh, introduced to uh, something that you learn, you want to do it a little bit different. You, you find something that you are, you are not okay with it. I mean, it's not, it, it, it's, it's, you are not okay. You can do some improvement and the improvement will make it better. I mean, this is something that is almost fundamental, not only, you know, in startups and, you know, being an entrepreneur, but on a, even on a day to day. Uh, and, and for me, it's, you know, it's on a personal basis. You, 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 you know, the way that you uh, drive to work, the way that you raise your kids, the way on the little things in life, or, you know, that uh, that you have uh, and do, um, this is probably the number one, I would say, parameters that, you know, sort of takes you uh, down the road. Talk to me a little bit about the different things you've done. So you're, you're curious about cybersecurity, you're curious about DevOps, you took that curiosity to the entrepreneurial world. Uh, you've been a part of some phenomenal organizations like Entrepreneur in Residence of the phenomenal uh, Team 8. You've, you've founded two companies that were very successful. And today you're, you're head of emerging technologies and innovation at, at Cisco Israel. Is there sort of a common thread amongst these things? Are you more of an entrepreneur? Are you more of a researcher? What sort of, you know, how do you describe who you are, you know, within this ecosystem? Yeah, I think it's it's really a combination of several things. Uh, let me give you an example, and and it's always, you know, and it, and, and it always start with with something that really binds to what I described formerly that you are not quote unquote happy with, okay? And you want to create a change. You want to make something that will change the world or change the way we are doing things in a traditional way. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a very simple example. Well, I have several of them, but you know, the most I would I would say prominent one is the one, for instance, with Fortune. Okay, so I've been with um, you know Checkpoint almost ten years, and I was leading a pretty large engineer organization of several hundreds folks that did you know uh, firewalls and network security. And what what I learned that uh, uh, you know every time that you sort of deploy. When you speak with customer and you want to do a new project, it always sort of uh, almost an open heart transplant, <laughs> for a lack of better term. Uh, it's always a project that you need acceptance and it takes a lot of time. And you are always the persona non grata as a security officer when you want to uh, to you know to deploy a new firewall into the actual uh, uh, operation environment. And then we thought, I mean. In the modern uh, application environment, where you have containers, you have Kubernetes, you have serverless, I mean, the uh, network, classical network security, the network segmentation, can it be so, I would say, uh, non, I would say, operate, operational uh, sensitive? And you you need the solution to be able to be a decoupled from the network to some extent, and also uh, be able to uh, be provisioned to the developers and DevOps in their own tools. You cannot really do it in the old way that you know you did you did things in the past. And and, and this is put, you know how you know Portship was born by the notion of doing some sort of uh, um, application based uh, and segmentation, but decoupled from the network without again without you know putting a lot of uh, I would say uh, friction with, with with the developers. Even the name Portship, by the way, is like port is really left. It's like shift left but also shifting from ports to something else. And the something else is a different notion uh, of, you know, uh, sort of uh, micro segmentation. And this is how the company started to change the way that uh, you do network segment segmentation. We actually chose, you know, being on the cloud native environment, we, we chose the uh, 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 underlying infrastructure, which is called Istio Service Mesh as, you know, as the techno underlying technology to be able to do this type of, uh, I would say, operation. But we learned very fast that yeah, it's not enough, okay? Which is, by the way, it's it's all it's, it's not enough to have a great technology and fall in love with your idea and of your product. You really need to see where the market is. And back then, serve and I'm talking about like four and four and a half years ago, uh, service mesh was really cool technology, really cool cool product. But we didn't really see a lot of adoption in the market because you know users and 
customers were coping with how can I secure my containers and my Kubernetes, let alone them in the service mesh. Let me let me have something which is much more basic. So again, we 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 change. Okay, we 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 understood that the vision is 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 good, but we need to change a little bit the focus. We need to address a pain point which is much more fundamental, much more basic. But in the same principle, no frictions, and obviously, and being able to and being deployed with, uh, I would say, with the devil's tool. So we started doing, a, I would say, a, a concept of uh, and, and t- taking the same, I would say, uh, product and the technology infrastructure to. Uh, to provide the same functionality, which is what we call the pyramid of necessity, something with a very something with a very base, uh, I would say, requirement, which is let's say uh, uh, um, vulnerabilities and visibility for those containers, and then configuration management, and only then I would say you know the more advanced functionality. And with that, actually, uh, we went to the market, which proven to be very very successful because again we turned out to be what we call a one-stop shop, okay, for uh, Kubernetes uh, security. But again, starting from the very base, the idea is that, that, that for the, again, the, the main idea was no friction, no agents for, you know, to, to install, not a lot of effort to, to for the developers and DevOps in order to deploy the product. And this is sort of how, you know, the, um, uh, you know, the, the company and the technology grew. And, and the lesson learned is that there are two, uh, you know, first you, you, you need to, to, to have the drive, okay, uh, to not accept what is being introduced by current solution in the current market. And the second thing is that, you know, if there is a wall which is like nine, 90 feet high, I mean, if you run um, m- much more faster, it doesn't really mean that you will pass it. So <laughs> you need to find another way to pass the wall. And in our case, it was to understand that, you know, for instance, in this example, service mesh is something that is not adopted and we need to change a bit, okay, our direction. Uh, in order to hit the right market and the right user. And this is the story of Portrait, by the way. Uh, and, and this was the, also the story of Blade Fusion, okay, which was another company that I founded. But again, the least common denominator nomin- nomin- there is to find something uh, which is not okay in the current technology, okay, to try to fix it, uh, but to, to do it in a, in a unique way. Uh, if, we, if you are targeting, right. I would say, a, a hyperscaler market, it has a great advantage. For instance, uh, we actually decided to go with cloud native containers and Kubernetes because we find out that you know the adoption we sort of uh, assumed, okay, that this would be like uh, the new form factor that inherit the earth, so to speak. So it worked out very good for us, okay. Um, but again, it's, it's not enough. Now, when you when you started Port Shift and you made that decision, or you. You sort of made that prediction that this is going to be the the bread and butter for for future cloud native companies. Was that trivial? Because today everybody sort yeah. of you know agrees to this. But was that was that already trivial back no, then? No, it's what, absolutely not trivial. Because when we talked with uh, you know with, with with CISOs, okay, which are the owners of the uh, you know the, 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 you know the security uh, sort of uh, realm. Kubernetes and well, actually, containers were something that is on the edge. Okay, it, it it was something there, but you know, nobody really sort of understood that this is going to be one day a huge issue. First, to be able to visualize, to understand what I have deployed, and second of all, obviously, to secure them. Then the same story came with Kubernetes. Okay, Kubernetes started very small with Google, yeah, and uh, and very fast grew, like you know. Uh, into gigantic, yep. uh, you know, uh, uh, dimensions. Uh, so it is, in mm-hmm. some case, we sort of, we gambled. Yeah, I must say we gambled, obviously, but it was an educated guess, I would say. Um, that being said, you know, every educate, educated guess usually is based on, the, on, on some working assumption. Our working assumption, that if we are talking with, let's say, 10 organization, and without those 10 organization, we see like, uh, we're talking with the right persona, with the DevOps, and we are hearing the same story all over again. It makes sense that it will happen down the road. So, yeah, so we definitely gambled on those on this domain, and luckily, you know, uh, we were we were. I love it, and I, and I love the intentionality behind it. But but this this dissonance between the you know you as an inventor and as a researcher, you as an entrepreneur, you're talking about this sort of like the, the, there is a difference between creating this innovative technology that is meant to do something that has never been done before, but do it in a way that that, a cons- that the consumers will enjoy, will fix their fundamental pyramid of needs. Um, 
was that easy sort of balancing those two worlds for you on one hand developing innovative technology and and assimilating it to consumers behavior or 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 did you find that challenging bridging those two worlds together yeah so yeah it's always challenging okay it's always challenging the you know to bridge between those two worlds from one hand but from the other hand this is really really the one of the main probably one of the main uh would say tasks that an entrepreneur should, should undertake mm-hmm. uh being able to bridge between what you want to bring uh, as a technology to a real pain point and in some cases the pain point is even not clear to the user itself himself uh in some cases you need sort of to uh educate the market that there is a really pain point there and if he doesn't see it today he will see this you know tomorrow right yeah uh, obviously it's much more challenging to you know to cope with those type of uh, you know uh of uh I would say challenges that being said uh the merit is much greater because if you are right then what starts today is something very small can turn out to be something huge down the road in our case it was very clear with containers kubernetes and service mesh and all of those you know good te- cloud native technologies obviously but uh yeah so this is definitely one of the I would say major tasks that you know I see our stuff as you know founders and entrepreneurs as you know mastering mm-hmm. it's almost like an art you know and and so following on that art today is as head of emerging technologies innovation at Cisco but but also sort of bring together your time as entrepreneur in residence a teammate and the ideation process for blade fusion what what is sort of your day to day like so how do you what is sort of the the persona that you have to bring as you're evaluating these new opportunities and these new technologies yeah so yeah well, one of our this you know decision to to join cisco you know uh, acquisition is is well, it, i think it's also pretty unique because we didn't really join cisco just in a corporate we we joined what we call the etni the emerging technology incubation group which was which is a fairly new uh, uh, division within uh, uh within uh, Cisco and the uh, and the charter of this division within Cisco is essentially to bring sort of the next generation technologies and product that we take Cisco I would say to the you know to the to the next phase in in the Cisco journey and the opportunity was a to take what we have with forchip that was done in, i would say in a fairly limited scale and to turn it into something grander uh as part of what we call the cloud native uh, uh, you know security uh, uh, domain but also as you know you know as leading the etni site here in uh, uh, in israel opening new ventures yeah mm-hmm. and one of the very interesting buckets that we uh, we are also uh, um sort of uh, entertaining is the machine learning ai specifically more specifically mlops and this is something that does not really relate to security or cloud native security it's totally on a different you know bucket okay so to speak but mm-hmm. you know uh, that being said very interesting and this is again another very unique opportunity to take to take our experience as you know as uh, founders of company and bring it and create a new venture and by the way we we have more like the same journey with uh uh the ml apps uh, that we're doing today with Cisco as we had in Portugal I mean I mean that things doesn't doesn't really dramatically change you still need to find a problem okay and once yeah. you find a problem you need to search for people that have the same problem and wants to solve the same problem and that's once you find those uh, people those are your audience or your of our design partners usually you think of the solution that you would pitch to them and once you pitch to them the solution you ask them whether they would like to use this type of solution and then the third layer of you know validation is okay once you use that type of uh, solution whether you want to pay for it so this is again so the main fundamental question stay the same it doesn't really matter whether you are running a startup you know uh by your own or even doing a new venture within uh you know copper such shut this cisco the difference i think in, in what we're doing today is the fact that we can fail one and four <laughs> we can decide that uh, we want to restart i mean the, this idea wasn't good we need to we want to change the idea uh and in you know and in etni cisco again it, it's nobody really wants to fail but if you're wrong but the, the, the implication are totally different i it, it's it's more like a playground i can decide that i want to move to a different story and a different venture nothing will happen in a startup you know the the pivot or the 
journey that I described to you as moving from something, from something very uh, that that we decided to do to something else, was not an easy task. Was not as an easy decision. This is you know uh, the, the the decision has a lot of implication of budget and, and the company and the focus again because the resources are much more uh, I would say um, uh, smaller in, in in the extent. But Incredible. the bottom line is that you still need to answer the same question uh, and every venture that you you, you, you you start, regardless whether it's like you do it on a startup or, or and, and, and Cisco. And by the way, this is one of the reasons why we decided to join Cisco in DNI, uh, because this brings a, an opportunity for us as a team uh, to create more stuff. And, and as a team, by the way, we weren't, you know, we weren't distributed the organization. We are still working as, you know, the port chief team. We extended. Obviously, we have more people. We are we are growing here dramatically. Uh, but again, uh, this is where we see the opportunity in, in, in creating new products and new things. And this is where we have the excitement. And we are uh, we are we are very. It sounds uh, it sounds extremely exciting, both on an entrepreneurial level, but also on an inventor and research level, bridging two distinct but but amazing worlds together. And. Uh, Ron, I really want to thank you for taking the time to to share these 20 minutes with me talking about both the, the entrepreneurial journey of Blade Fusion and Port Shift, but also a little bit about today's role within Cisco and how you're thinking through these this problem solution mindset. And uh, I can't wait to continue following your work and seeing what, what new things you come up with. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Fantastic. And thank you for having me today. Thank you. Bye -bye.